So hi, I am here with Joey Walker today, and we are going to talk about Joey's film, uh, Blue Bell Tour, that was part of Cabin Fever Film Fest. How are you this afternoon, Joey? Oh, just fantastic. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Oh, glad, glad you could make time for it. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I've been asking people about their inspiration and I think that one of the comments I heard the most at the film fest about this film was that it was very inspiring. People loved uh, being able to be out in nature through your film. So tell us a little bit about what inspired you to make it, what inspires you in general as, as an artist and filmmaker. Well. I needed a video to share with a, a large group, my family, for Easter that normally congregates at our family property uh, in the spring for Easter. And uh, we usually have a giant get together and everybody goes on a hike through the bluebells. And uh, well, with COVID and you know some of the restrictions we've had, I have had to make it virtual. So I grabbed some of my equipment and ran out into the woods and just started filming and uh, made, made a video that we put together and put it on Facebook, you know, and everybody was able to watch it before our giant Zoom Easter. So, mm -hmm. and I think it made everybody feel like they could be a part of it there. And, and uh, you know, just, it was fun to film. That's lovely. That's such a lovely story. I, I think that was a great way to bring everybody together. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, well, so you talked a little bit about your tools. I mean, uh, it seemed to me that you were floating on air while you made this film. So maybe you could share with everybody how that happens. Well, my background's actually in uh, remote control camera cranes, uh, stunt driving and things in the film business. And um, I have a drone and uh, I just wanted to make some nice floaty moving shots and just kind of give it that dolly effect, you know, the, the dolly and the crane effect of just having, I love the moving image and, I just wanted to kind of go out there. Plus, flying the drone's fun and making sure you don't hit a tree while you're over the creek, you know, is, is, is a little bit more of a challenge that makes it fun. But um, so I use the drone for most of it. And um, I created the original version of it all with the drone and put that on for the Easter. And then I wanted to put it in the film festival. And I was like, well, I need some close ups. So I went back and I filmed some close ups with the good old iPhone. And uh, actually, it was an Android phone at that point, I think. And I uh, kind of wanted some close-ups to go in with the other footage. and But primarily, it was the drone, 90-plus um, percent of it. Yeah, it's very cool. And, I mean, what I really loved about it is that bluebells typically grow near water. So when you see them, you can never be on the water generally unless you, you know, have a boat. And so it was really nice to have those shots from the water looking back at the banks. I, I thought that was beautiful. I really wanted that too. And that was probably one of the trickiest parts of it was, you know, you know, your early morning and your golden hour, you know, right at dusk, dusk and dawn are kind of like the prettiest times to have that sun give a little bit of golden glow and have it backlight the right way. So that was a little bit of a challenge. Um, and one of the funny stories was I actually grabbed the drone. I got up early on a Saturday morning, you know, and ran down. I wanted to get the natural light. And I turned on the drone and I was a happy filmmaker and uh -oh, it won't lift off. And I was like, what's going on here? And so I thought it was, uh, it has to do with GPS, you know, um, and it kind of goes on, I think, the satellites and stuff to try to make it communicate yeah. so you don't run into things and uh, right. go places you're not supposed to and altitudes you're not allowed to. Um, mm -hmm. But um, so I, I actually had a golf cart, so I drove around to another spot and tried to get it to lift off. And about 45 minutes later, the sun's coming up. I'm, ah, you know, I'm missing my, my beautiful light. I finally drove back to the house and four hours later, after I, updated the software oh, no. the good old oh, no. software it had to redo its gps stuff and you know i hadn't had it now to, to to the equipment's credit i guess i hadn't had it out in a few months and there's an update and if you you know these computers this computer world we're living in so i had to go back <laughs> my initial lighting that i really wanted 
so that afternoon I got the other, we have a Creek that's on uh, the East and the West side, you kind of like a horseshoe goes around or you saw the video that kind of goes around like a horseshoe. So I went to where the sun's great in the evening and I filmed that part. And then I got up the next morning, got the morning part. Thankfully I started shooting a day before Easter. Cause if I had needed it that day, it just wouldn't have happened. Wow. So, uh, but uh, that's kind wow. of a little bit of a story. That happened to me, yeah. But. Well, I mean, when you're depending on nature to do your lighting for your shoot, yeah, you, uh, you're at its beck and call. Oh my gosh. Now, so the property that you were filming is your family's property where, where you live? Yes, it's, um, it was an old farm. Um, it goes back, it's part of, uh, probably should be a historical site in Waterford. It goes back to the Quaker times in Waterford, Virginia. Uh, my parents bought in the seventies there and, uh, We've been there. My brother's got his family in a house and my wife and I built a house there now, too. And uh, we have a, a little sustainable flower farm and experimental gardens um, and uh, amongst just a fantastic place that hopefully we're going to be able to share more with with our community and other people who might need, you know, places to go to just uh, have a little space and time with nature. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was a treat. And especially now when we're in the throes of winter and feeling that cabin fever. I think it was just what we needed to watch a film like that and be able to escape. So that was amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, so since it was your property and you were filming by yourself, I guess COVID didn't really affect your filming, but um, can you just talk a little bit about like how much it meant to you to be able to get out in nature and and do that at a time when we all are feeling so isolated and, and quarantining? I think there's several parts to it. One's the arts, you know, the art of filmmaking. It, it really can be such a, a, a great way to just uh, uh, I don't want to say distract the mind, but it's a good a good resource and a good way to just bring uh, a healthy state of mind you know when you can practice yeah. some art and you can engage in something especially create something um, and then the nature part of it too I think is is extremely important to my family um, and uh, some of the beliefs and things that we have uh, is very tied to nature and I think uh, having that has been something that's definitely gotten myself through and, and my family through and a few friends that we've allowed to come walk you know away from us you know safely um, through there I think there's a lot of healing to be had both in nature and in the arts. And, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I, I've been there most of my life, so I'm kind of used to it being there, but I do think right. quite a bit about other people that don't have it and how wonderful it is that we have parks and places for people. And part of our long-term goal is to hopefully have that property, uh, possibly become more engaging for the community and to wow. maybe have like a healing center for people. I, you know, it's a long-term goal, but um, yeah. I think it's very special. And I think that uh, we have a lot of birds. There's eagle, almost daily we see eagles and hawks and, wow. um, and everything. So I think that there's a lot of uh, really good for you mentally and physically that come out of that property. And the stork dropped me off somewhere great. That's all I got to say. My <laughs> parents are fantastic. And I don't know what I did in my prior life, but it's it's been a, an absolutely amazing place to grow up and uh and now fully uh understand what you have and try to appreciate it and then also understand the power that it has possibly to help other people um you know maybe yeah. it's just visually a film like this or you know hopefully through a program or something we can do uh you know more locally on the farm uh, in the future it's part of where my heart's going with some of this yeah i bet i mean it just sounds so so healing like you were saying and and uh like there's a lot more films coming our way which i'm very excited about full disclosure joey works at franklin park arts center too as uh one of our full-time techs and uh just bringing all this experience and and uh and knowledge and um joy to the workplace every day so we're lucky to have him as part of our team. And uh, um, I just have to ask you, like, how did it feel for you to be able to see your film up, you know, on the big screen and, and hear people's reactions, you know, because um, you were there both days. 
it's it's so much better on the big screen. Yeah. You know, I wish in my edit bay I had a 20, 30 foot, you know, screen <laughs> like we have at Franklin Park. And um, you really get to see a lot of detail on that big screen. But I, I think it also just it, it sinks into you. You know, you get almost all the emotions. I look forward to the future when there's, you know, smell of vision and everything else, because then you can really just immerse yourself into it. Hopefully it's good quality video. But um, you know, on the big screen, you can really just feel it and it just absorb yourself, you know, right into it. And, um, you know, that's really what I want to do with this film, you know, one for my family. But now that I wanted to bring it to the to, to share with the rest of the community was, you know, just spring. Think spring. Think, yeah. you know, I, I put on, on the very end there, you know, I put the uh, quote from Aubrey Hepburn and it just really means a lot, you know, because if you can think about tomorrow, plan for tomorrow or just have the ability to want to think about tomorrow, I think there's a lot of goodness in that and um yeah. yeah that's why i like the film but i did hear a few people i think uh say a few things um i could i, I always you know everybody listens around them to see what the criticalness is but i think i heard absolutely beautiful and, and things like that and mm-hmm. that was my goal you know just a lot of noise in the world a lot of a lot of distractions a lot of you know you don't know which way to turn and and uh, i think when you turn back to nature Nature will never really lie to you because it could be a thunderstorm, you know, what to expect, or it could be a beautiful right. spring day with the flowers blooming, and you can right. really just, you know, you know, do great things with that. So it's it was really fun to hear and be a part of the film festival, and uh, I'm hoping to do some more in the future. Yeah, we we had a good time this year, and uh, I think being able to talk to the filmmakers like this and and um, give our audiences a chance to get to know them personally a little bit is part of what the the film festival is all about so really appreciate your time and i i don't know if you feel comfortable you want to share the story of your jacket that you've got on there (laughs) yeah sure um right before this year's film festival i visited my mother briefly and up way up in the attic from 20 plus years ago I know this baby face looks a little younger than that, but uh, I'm pushing 38 here next week. Um, my mother was cleaning out her uh, attic, or I guess I have boxes of stuff that she just loves to keep up there. And uh, like brand new off the shelf, it still fits. Um, I was part of the Monroe Technology Center's television production course in high school here in Loudoun County, which has kind of evolved into the Academies of Science and Art, uh, the Academies of Loudoun. Uh, and uh, which I highly encourage everybody to try to be a part of. It's just, it really uh, gave me a great place to drive my life. So this jacket, if, as stylish as it is, you know, it's got the cuffs <laughs> and everything. It's straight out. Can you see that? Oh, that's it's great. The TV crew, Monroe Technology Center, Loudon Schools. Yay. So there you go. So, uh, everybody mom, that's just out of the blue, yeah, out, of the, out of the blue, my mother, gave me this jacket last week or you know before the film festival and I was like I'm wearing that I, I could button it up 20 years later look at me you know fantastic but, uh, that's awesome so I was still supporting you know Dr. Mr. Durkin and Wade Crouch you know thank you guys for your education and giving me a place to stand on when I was young trying to look out at the world and figure out who I wanted to be when I grow up I'm still doing there we go yeah. and and look and this is great inspiration for all those students out there you know, so many of our uh, entries for the Film Fest are students of filmmaking. So it's nice for them to see that there can be a career in it. So I think that's great. So, yeah. So thanks for sharing that story. We thought that was amazing. So good, good, good. Well, yeah, Joey, if, you know, please keep in touch with, with the festival with, you know, any future films. We're, we can't wait to see what's going to happen on that farm of yours. and be able to uh, visit it virtually and thank you for making this film for your family, but sharing it for us too. It was really beautiful. Thanks for having me and let me be a part of it. All right. Well, have a great day.